know you have a good idea when you can feel it internally. There's like a chill that runs through your body. And you go, wow, who's thought of that? Probably no one. Formula One is the top level of everything. Try to name me a sport where you have 550 people who make two cars performing on a Sunday race. The cars standing still looks like it's doing 200 miles an hour. If the F1 Championship decided the first one to reach the moon wins, we'd do it. We were challenged with creating an immersive experience of the future of Formula One. We were looking at the key innovations for the elements in our project, for the driver, for the track, and also the car. When I was asked to design a Formula One car in the future, I thought that's sort of a daunting job description here. First of all, I was thinking, who am I going to upset? One thing we say in Formula One, a quick car will be beautiful. You can be the best driver in the world. If you don't have a car that's capable of winning, you're not going to win. Technology in Formula One changes all the time. It changes day to day. What we do, curved batteries, aerodynamics, wind tunnels, CFD sensors, no other motorsport has. They learn from us and they use what we have, but we're the ones that pioneer it, we're the ones that take it forward. We never take the same car to two races. We try many, many things, and a very small percentage of them make them to the track. You never arrive at the ultimate. You always keep working. Formula One is about overcoming challenges you're given. Give us a rule, we'll make it quicker than anyone else. Every year they try and make us go slower, but every year we go faster. Marshmallow Laser Feast is a collection of artists and designers and programmers, and we work on the intersection of sort of art and technology. A lot of our work's been exploring this line between the virtual and the real. We were interested in this idea of visualising the future of Formula One. It's difficult to present something that people haven't seen relating to the future of a car race because it's one of the things people love to imagine. How do we create an immersive experience that can take somebody into the future of Formula One? The backbone to what we do is based in research, looking at existing technology and trying to understand through talking to experts where that can end up going. The Lotus F1 HQ is this really dynamic environment and it looks very much like Hughes Lab from James Bond. And it was interesting to just get a glimpse of what goes on behind the walls there. Each respective department is pushing to innovate. Can I touch it? It's quite extraordinary the amount of thought, expertise and years of hard work that goes into just these split seconds in time really. Two and a half seconds is our aim. What we'd want to avoid is for a glitch and to add an extra half a second to a second. To that time then it's a disaster. What's really cool about F1 right now, never mind in the future, is the element of telemetry, this acquisition of data in real time. There's approximately 65 sensors on the car and they channel back through telemetry around about 2,000 core channels from the sensors. Then we have software that generates another 5,000 sensors so that we can monitor the car's health and performance. All this data is wirelessly fed back to the pits. The car is constantly giving us information live from the circuit. We're not allowed to give the car any information. It's just got to be one-way traffic. So we're looking at the information it provides off of all the sensors. We're analysing it and then we're seeing if we can better it with either a mechanical change by the driver on the steering wheel or by something we can do in a pit stop. 
we're measuring the engine, making sure it's running at its optimum temperature, the gearbox, the hydraulic system, pressures, but not only things like that, we can also measure performance things. So we have a lot of aerodynamic pressure tappings around the car, so we measure the pressure at various points around the car. We can and we do monitor pretty much anything on the car that we want to. You know, this real-time analysis is a real goldmine of things to explore. What if the driver can see and hear the invisible forces? How to bring that to life in a visual language really influenced the kind of starting point for the work that we were doing. We went out to LA to hang with Harold Belker. Who has designed some of the most amazing vehicles for Hollywood. I am a automotive designer and I specialize in cars for film. It all started with the Batmobile for Batman Robin. Then there came movies like Minority Report, Star Trek, and Total Recall. When I start a project that has to do with future vehicles or future environments, I think about the beauty of the future and what's possible with technology and how I can incorporate that to make something nicer looking, better working. I pretty much have to get a feeling for the world I design for and let those parameters be my limitations if it is really a limitation. Personally, I would move away from tires and then work with new technology, possibly maglev. And that is a radical change in technology. It also doesn't make it a car anymore. You know, if you don't have four tires, you're dealing with a vehicle. I knew that I had to still recognize what makes F1 F1. Then I just tried to apply modern technology with memory metals. If you could uh, elaborate on how you see that working. Today there's a concept of memory shape alloy. The alloy in the cold state has a different shape when it's heated up. So there are two different stages. So I can imagine that with different materials and in the future that you can control that perhaps without uh, the temperature change. You have some sort of current running through the material and that material then again reacts to the pressure or there's some microchip in there that maximizes the shape. I have intakes that shut themselves closed and open up reflecting how much air they need to cool the electric generator. So it's very purpose driven. There's a whole world of possibilities based around that one simple idea. When he explains it, that's when you really start to get an understanding of how it might move and that it's this sort of living, breathing thing rather than a, a traditional F1 car. It's really a, a, a live vehicle in a way that it does breathe according to uh, what it needs. That's why it has these louvers on the side and then, you know, at high speed they close up because you're pushing a lot of air in there anyway, so you don't need big openings. Mm. And it uh, reduces the drag. It was interesting because we didn't know what you were going to do with the design and we were seeing all the shape memory alloys on YouTube and we were thinking, ah, wouldn't it be cool like in, um, in sailing where you have that tactic of dirty wind so mm -hmm. you can kind of block someone by getting up wind and it makes it hard for them to overtake yeah. you. The idea of slipstreaming takes on a whole new dimension when you're looking at shifting skin technology. And we're thinking how channeling airflow can create really powerful jet engine like thrust. But maybe there was a clever way of opening up, sucking in air and using that to, to put on the air brakes and create turbulence. And I mean, we're just playing with ideas. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Make me redesign the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Back to yeah. the drawing board. We really like the idea of this kind of deep breath on a corner, re-channeling the airflow as a means of air braking and then slipstreaming and pulling out into a straight. We've already got software in place and we've got ideas of where we want to take that. The opportunity to work with Harold Belker was amazing because we're big fans of his work anyway and it's always good to meet a hero. Some of the seeds that he sowed, we kind of took those and then just ran with them. Harold's design is rooted in reality but allows for a few technical innovations. It looks feasible, you know. It just, technology isn't quite there yet, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't happen. Formula One is, I think, like no other industry, in the speed it develops. Just go to the limit of your imagination. I'll definitely predict that in 30 years' time, you'll still have a driver in a piece of machinery, and that piece of machinery will still be the fastest thing on the planet to go around a track. Hopefully we can present something that is a realistic future vision, conscious of real world problems such as sustainability, but also embracing innovation and embracing human ingenuity.
let's make the racetrack intelligent grass that moves or flows in response to vehicles. Never forget how important a human element is. Once you learn to race, then you've got to learn to win. The sense of speed and things passing you yeah. is gonna, yeah, hopefully it'll make people fall over. Mm. That's, what, that's what we're hoping for.